Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well. I'm doing a 45 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing. The goals are around feeling stuck. I'm gonna read the goals here in just a moment. I wanna thank you so much. Thank you so very much for this opportunity. I'm excited to help you. I'm excited to see what we can do to get you unstuck. Sure, there's gonna be some advice and some healing here that's gonna help others. So thank you so much for sharing on YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna read your goals and we're gonna get started. You say, hello, Abby. All I can say is I'm feeling stuck. Can't seem to move forward. I'm open to whatever guidance or healing is needed to break the old patterns. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna relax, get in the zone here. All right, so what is the most meaningful support? What is the most meaningful perspective? What wisdom healing can we share to really help you feel like you found your compass and your footing, like you can actually start to move forward in your life with yourself, with your goals, and any concept of feeling stuck, and if it's associated with old patterns, what can we do to re reconcile old patterns and let those go? Any kind of attachment to old patterns. And so we could really be in the present and the now moment. Okay. The first scene, energetically, everything is very dense and heavy, okay? And I'm kind of on the outside looking in. I'm actually ground level, ground level. There's a lot of mud material that's very sticky, okay? And I see there's this kind of egg shape and it's hard. Like I'm knocking on it. It's like a hollow stone. You're on the inside of that. It's impossible to break through. I even see myself with a jackhammer and I can't crack it. The substance of it, it, it's actually got a black appearance and I can kind of see through, so it's not clear. So this energy that you're inside of is super dense and it's, it's almost like uh, wearing sunglasses where the, the, the darkness of the shades is so dark you can barely see the world outside. So this is uh, shielding your clarity as well. Plus the ground being sticky and muddy so, yeah, <laughs> I can see why being stuck is your reality here. <laughs> okay, let's see where this takes us. Okay, I'm actually looking on the inside of the structure. And I just simply focus my attention completely on the essence of yourself that is inside. You kind of glow with a chalky white light and you're very thin. I mean, I can see through you. You're wearing a very peculiar outfit. It seems like uh, maybe in a, a type of sport. Like, like you might have a certain outfit if you are a professional horseback rider and being judged on how you're trotting your horse. You, you have a special outfit for that. Uh, where, if you play hockey, you're going to have a special outfit for that. It seems like a sports outfit, but you're wearing a red sweater. You have a little white hat on, and you're wearing white uh, pants. That It's like, it seems to be a kind of uniform. I'm noticing that the structure you're in is a type of flower and it's sealed shut completely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to duplicate myself. There's gonna be a me that's simply gonna put hands here on the ground and I just send love into it. Thank you for being the mud that you are. Thank you for being sticky. 
Thank you for being this way. I see you just the way you are, and I love you just the way you are. Another me on this structure. Wow, how incredible. You're an unbreakable unbreak force. What a beautiful and unusual flower you are. I love how you create this sort of dark shielding. It's very unique. It's very one of a kind. But it's, it's the energy of gratitude. It's not like feeding the ego or something. It's genuine gratitude, which that's interesting to say because perhaps your stuck situation is an ego-related thing. Um, we don't really know how ego is a, a very influential force in our everyday life. <laughs> and it, it kind of hides in the background, but it, it really has its claws in sometimes. And so the way to come become heart-centered is through the power of gratitude. So ego, you can manipulate ego with gratitude, <laughs> all right? Um, wow, ego, you work so hard to help me navigate my life. It's not like, I worship you. No, it's like friend to friend. Thank you for all you do. I know that this is the best you know how to do right now. And thank you for that. Um, I think there's so much we can do together. So much, so many ways we can grow. And this is like heart to mind communication. Heart to mind. The mind, it, it, man, I, like there's a thousand things I could say here about how this thing works. But when we're talking about energy and getting things moving and circulating in on the go, um, imagine you're a child that you, you feel maybe you have developed some, some insecurities. And so you're more still and you're more um, trying to pay attention to what bad thing might happen if you do this one thing wrong versus feeling loved and nurtured in your decisions and you're spoken to um, with clarity and not threats. Um, and so you can see how a child feels more free in their own inspirations, their own curiosities and adventures, you know, versus uh, stifled and stuck even in prison and to be able to really grow and live in a sense of freedom of self-expression so so here in your energy field um, it's already telling me there's something about um, maybe inner child uh, ego and we need to start getting things in motion and that there's nothing to be afraid of when it comes to being in motion when it comes to being heart-centered when it comes to following your heart and life becoming a fun adventure when it's in a fun adventure, yeah, there's going to be challenging times, but that too is a fun adventure. So it's shifting things to avoiding challenging times to I'm not afraid of challenging times because I'm equipped. I'm equipped with creativity. I'm equipped with a, a good heart. I'm equipped with a smile and I can navigate. So, so we're shifting the energy here into the heart that you're fully equipped to navigate a world that is actually exciting. It's an adventure. So... So, okay, so who doesn't want to let me in? So who's in charge here? So, so it's interesting because the question is, are you in charge of yourself? <laughs> is ego in charge of yourself? You know, is your heart in charge of you? Like, it, you see the, the word in charge of. It's like those words right there. This is all about the open experience. It, it, I'm free um, to experience exchange, communication, learning, growth, joy. There's no in charge of anything else. And so then who are you, right? The who am I concept. You're limitless. You're free. There are no boundaries to who you are, what you can do, who you can be, how you can love, how you can be challenged to love, but how you can love that much stronger because you just know who you are. You know what I mean? So I want to tell you another thing. This is pretty common. Um, there are times in our life where we need energy protection in a way that, um, let's say we've been traumatized to the point that we, we struggle to fall asleep at night. And so we need to create a construct, which then becomes the energy protection. And we, we might say something like, um, the construct is, um, Jesus is with me, and because Jesus is with me, I'm safe to fall asleep. So that's a construct that is real. But we have to create it in order to align with the reality of it in order for us to just grow out of the need to even do that. Because the truth is Jesus is always with us. God is always with us. Mother Earth, you know, the greatest good and evil is, is always with us because we're part of the fabric of literally every single thing. 
And the more at peace we are with that, and the more comfortable we are with that, and knowing that we literally are everything, it, it's almost kind of silly when when you struggle like to to align with it. But life does that. Life challenges us. We we kind of get suffocated. We choke in a place, and we need to create the constructs in order to wiggle ourselves back into the reality that we are everything. There's nothing to be afraid of. So when it comes to energy protection. This orb, this egg-shaped thing that's extremely dense, is like energy protection. But this one needs to break down because the good energy, sometimes energy protection keeps everything out. It just keeps it all out. So you're just circulating in your own energy with nothing new coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. And so there has to be another, like a, a new sense of letting your guard down letting your guard down and it's an adventure to have the energy come and go and to breathe the fresh air of the universe again okay because you're an infinite being you are the fresh air of the universe you are all of it so it's it's normal to go through phases of challenge and need the extra support because you can't you can't seem to align with it right now and then you grow out of it and it's just like i've been free all along i just was going through that hard time so all this conversation I'm having with you in the video, right? But I'm also having it in your energy field. So your inner selves are listening. All that you are is listening to me. Your ego and your conscious mind, your unconscious, your subconscious, your soul, your physical body, all that you are is listening to what I'm saying. I'm like the announcer to the stadium of yourself, okay? So everything is listening. And I just say I'm here and I'm here with love. And thank you for being as you are. I'd like to get to know you better. And part of getting to know you better is, is time, beautiful is flower, to, to open up so the world can really cherish you. It's like if the flowers never opened ever again, there would be something strange about the world. You know, like the day the music died or something. It's also seeing yourself as a closed off flower and it's time to open up, you know? It's time for the world to see you and all that makes you wonderful and precious. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I see that this is occurring. Um, so in one version of truth, you are finally opening up. In another version of truth, there is this like resistance, this kind of shaky, like, like you're lying to me or you're manipulating me. And no, I can't open up because the moment I open up, I'm going to regret it. I'm going to get whipped. I'm going to get punished for it. And, and so we, we've got two, two pathways of truth here. One is I'm open. I want to know what comes next. The other is stop lying to me. Okay. <laughs> and so this is like your inner selves are at battle with each other. And what makes the most amount of sense is closed. <laughs> that is the only way we can be sure we're not gonna get hurt but then you're hurting yourself <laughs> you stay closed you're hurting yourself <laughs> so crazy okay all right all right you you actually agree with that the part of you that stays closed um in that version of the truth is like you're kind of right <laughs> It's like a parent talking to the kid and the kid can't, it's not going to be like, you're right. And they're more like, well, you're kind of right. <laughs> it's kind of like a grumpy teenager, <laughs> this closed flower. All right. And it is part of the essence of yourself. Okay. And this does have to do with the heart, the mind, ego, the inner child, it has to do with how, how the world, you know, taught us how free and, and limitless we are as an energy, as a self-expression, as a beautiful living being. You know, people are influential. Parents, friends, school experiences, work experiences, all influential. Soul memories, influential. We don't even know what they are, but we're a living, breathing nucleus of all time, <laughs> okay? So self-awareness is the only way to really conquer this thing. Mindfulness is, is like the kind way of putting it. Mindfulness. <laughs> Be self-aware. Be mindful. 
It's nice to be mindful. <laughs> How about heartful? Yes, that's good too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're far more open. Oh my gosh. What happened to your world? Okay, so the ground isn't sticky. It's not muddy. And then me, that's like gently like loving this like closed flowers, loving this ground. The me, that's this sort of announcer sort um, looking into things and sharing the message here. Um, all these me's are looking around now. The ground has become like a hardened lava. So like a black stone. And nothing grows here. Oh, so it's like kind of makes my heart sad. <sighs> like I feel really sad in my heart. I'm happy that you're exposed now to the world around you, but the world around you is just like hardened lava where nothing grows. You look small. I mean, you look like a kid. You look like uh, maybe very olden time baseball or something. You look like you have a red knit sweater that has no sleeve. Like the sweater itself is just sleeveless. And then you have a white shirt underneath with a collar. And you wear a little cap. Um, it seems like you have uh, long white socks to white pants and maybe some um, cleated shoes for running. Like you're an old timey baseball player, but you're a little kid. Maybe you're a little golfer, like you play golf. It's like you're wearing a uniform that represents a sport and you're young, you're small. I, I want to say it's baseball though. I feel like you have a glove and a ball um, in your hands. Like you want to play a game. Something is pretty sad though. Like um, you want to play a game, but you're not in the right place with, there's nobody here but you. And there's, there's no real baseball field. So it's just something you want to do that isn't something that can happen. And it feels like loss, but you're not going to give up. You're like, if I can wear the outfit, if I can have the glove and the ball, you know, if I build it, they will come. <laughs> it's like field of dreams. <laughs> um, but nobody comes and there is no one to play with here. You're not going to give up, but um, I can tell a part of your infinite timeline is sort of stuck in this moment. Like you're smiling and you're like at the ball and the glove. And my guides are like, well, why don't, why doesn't Abby just go play with this little part of yourself? And it's like, that's not the solution that's coming to me. I, I feel like the solution that's coming to me um, has to do with the painful raw reality, not um, playing in the fantasy. But maybe, okay, so maybe we could try two different ways, but I, I got to follow my heart here, and my heart says that the reality is disappointing. <laughs> the fantasy is hopeful, okay? It's hopeful, but the reality is disappointing. So if we go in the reality, then we're just going into disappointment. But it's the only thing that's real. You know, it's in our material world. It's the only thing that's real. It's the one thing that's real. <laughs> we can play pretend all day, but the one thing that's real is the building blocks here. We could build uh, uh, the, the most coolest architectural structure in our mind, but in the real world, like we need to have the people, we need to have the architectural plans, we need the time to build it, we need the investment, um, we need the vision for it. We need the, the, the landscaping and the, the, the land itself. Like we need a lot of p moving pieces to create this into reality. And there's something about the reality that in our mind, bam, amazing architectural structure. But in the reality, it's like, um, in our mind, we have many people to hang out with that are just like us and want to play the game. But in reality, um, it's, it's like, it's horrifyingly sad, um, child ready to play baseball with nobody it's really sad okay like why would we go there because it's real and that's what makes it beautiful because i can love you more for the way you genuinely are instead of the way you pretend 
You know, like I can't love you by playing in your fantasy baseball, but I can love you by being in this world where the lava is now stone and nobody's here. And I'm more like a, a voice in your head or something. But I am here. I'm present with you. Okay, yeah, this is a pretty big um, inner child event, okay? So it really impacts my heart a lot. It does make me feel sad. So I have like this like hardcore empathy. Um, and I see that from this like childlike self, there's this huge uh, kind of like monumental um, like expression of energy that comes out of your head like an invisible... I mean, maybe a giant bonfire, but it's all just invisible. It's like a huge energy that kind of creates that shape and movement. And it's on top of your head and then it's very expansive and grows up and out, like up into outer space even. It's huge. It could be your own spirit, your own soul. And we need to bring that energy back inside of you. When that happens, everything becomes white, basically. White is can be good. White can be not good. White could be uh, brand new, like a blank slate, um, a, a fresh new canvas, okay? We don't know what we're putting on it, but at least we can start with something fresh and discover what that's going to be. Um, so it's a good thing, but maybe the not good thing is I have no idea what I'm going to paint. Okay, great. So I have a fresh canvas, but... Uh, now what? I, I don't know what I'm going to paint. I'll probably screw it up. You know, so now it can create a lot of other things. White can also be colorless or dead. Okay. Uh, so when white is colorless, it's like it's meant to be so much more vibrant than this, but all the colors sucked out of it. So it's just white and dead. Okay. Like a dead person. Um, this white reminds me of like colorless, sucked dry, um, dead world kind of thing. And I feel that too. I feel that um, in the knees, in the feet and ankles, in the hips, like with the moving parts, how we actually move forward, they're, they're like all dried up, lacking motion, lacking um, the ability to have the strength and energy and motivation to move. It's like... Uh, in a dead world, all things are dead. <laughs> so there's no movement. There is nothing, you know. So this energetically is like a horrifying purgatory. Because in this purgatory, the rule book says all things here are dead. And in that state of death, you just remain in the colorless void. And a part of your essence is here. <laughs> you kind of part of the ground, like a little face that just, you're, you're in a dream that has no images, it has no voice, it has no sound. And so it feels like a, a sleep state where you're dreaming about nothing. But it's far more of a depressed um, energy than that. And it feels like drained, sucked of all life. I can't move. I'm just a, a functionless vegetable that has no purpose. This is pretty real. So when I bring that energy into this ba little baseball player and we're coming into the raw reality, no wonder you avoid it because it's impossible. It's like the energies that you're translating and digesting in your human life include your infinite soul, include how your memories have affected you in other lifetimes in this one and aspects of your soul from everywhere. <laughs> so it's like a soul retrieval thing. You have a, just a little spark of your huge blazing hot star of energy is in this place. And it's not necessarily for me to get you out of here, which is a bit confusing. Because it has to be self-realized for you to, to leave. And there's a reason why anyone would find themselves here. 
And they're telling me that even these desolate worlds um, have valuable purposes. It seems pretty sad, but there's power to it and the learning that happens when you conquer it and have a self-realization and let it go. You become a master of sorts. So it's not to make you feel powerless, but powerful because there's a mastery happening here. So in all of your stuck energy, you're actually having a, a mastery event. And where are you in the mastery? Have you, have you just begun? Did you begin a long time ago and you're still like in an intermediary place with it? Are you actually already mastered um, in what this is about? You just haven't self-realized yet? Could be all those things at the same time, you know? I'm not supposed to, um, I'm not supposed to, to touch this place because I have to respect you enough to let you master what this is about. They want me to go back to the baseball player and to know this stuff happens on its own, not because you humanly thought about it, but because it, it was like an energetic event. That your human mind can't just make the energetic event because it's a domino of infinite proportions, okay? So part of this is of your wise higher self and all of your wise essence and divine time and all of that. Okay, I'm pulling in more of that energy and I'm getting it through the head, the neck, um, shoulders, arms, torso. I'm just going to pull it all the way down, okay? Pulling it all the way inside of you. And you start to become this little baseball player, becomes a shell and it cracks and it breaks. It literally just goes, whoops, like breaks in a bunch of pieces like you were made out of like a hardened clay that was pretty fragile. It was like porcelain or something. And you just like, like, become two halves and you just bust on both sides and become a bunch of pieces and you're just like a weird fire clear invisible then fire of odd proportion and you don't know what you are you don't know what any of it is you don't you need guidance and i just start laughing i'm like do you know what you're saying don't you remember who you are come on now <laughs> When I hear your fire self, like, playing like you have Alzheimer's or something, like, this isn't a biological forgetfulness. This is like a soul um, deciding that it doesn't know what it is. A soul knows itself it, without knowing itself. It just is, you know? It's an essence. It's an inspiration. It's a spark, you know? And, it, and so I tell you that. I say, okay, you're a spark. <laughs> you're firelight. You're a spark. Now, you tell me something. We'll play a game. You tell me something. I tell you something. We'll go back and forth. Now, you tell me something. Okay, something vomits out of your sacral chakra. It's a dark, tar-like energy. It's kind of like a volcanic eruption, but it's just like this black tar in your lower abdomen. And it's just like an oil spill just happened everywhere. And you cry and you say, I can't fix it. I can't get anything right. I can't do anything right. I say, but you are though. That was the right thing to do. You need to release that. Okay, so you told me something. You release that. Now I told you something. You're doing everything right. Now you tell me something. <laughs> you start laughing like, Oh, the thing I just did was the right thing to do. And something sounds like bells ringing, like little bells. And uh, you're listening to little bells ringing and it particularly impacts your higher mind and just like your human mind, like a third eye and crown chakra, but it's like your brain, your ego, your human mind, human memories, but also your higher mind, something of a more cosmic you. And you want to bring the ringing bells down into your, your voice and your heart, your emotions, your sacral chakra, your sacredness, and your roots, your grounded sense of self, okay? So the bells are guiding you to being who and what you are. And it's cheerful. 
and it's very um, inner child like um, like a kid playing with like let's say for Christmas you get um, I don't know like a, <laughs> it's like a little piano okay and it's an electronic one and you're just like boom 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 and it's just like fun because you just want to make noise okay and so it's kind of like these bells are just like imagine a little kid that has like some small bells that are just a little bit different size and they're just like bing 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 but like ringing them constantly and it's just making you cheerful it's making you feel playful making you feel happy and you can make noise you can make noise with the bells and nobody's gonna get upset you're gonna make noise with this little piano you're gonna make noise and it's like sound you know and you're giggling and you're like oh it's so easy and I say, yes, it is, because you, you're allowing yourself to be on the adventure, right? You're not logically saying, I should do this in this particular way, and that's the only way to make it right, or maybe I shouldn't do it at all because it's going to bother people. It's like, you got to just, you just got to do something. Like, you got to just be you, you know, you just got to just like let a thing happen, which is your intuition or your instincts to be a little childlike and playful and laugh and uh it's like coming back to that energy again getting you into your heart and getting you into your joy and your spirit fire okay okay now i start to see you're doing so great um so i'm telling you but you're gonna tell me now and you're um there's big hands that grasp like your wrists and have you stop and saying no no not right now, later. Um, and you're like, okay, but later never comes. And you're on hold. You're just on hold. Like uh, a parent telling a child, um, okay, you, you can play with, uh, we got you these special uh, bells to ring, um, but now's not the time, but you can play with them later. And later never comes. So they get you something um, that you want to play with, you're never going to be able to play with. It's freaking rude. It's cruel. It's like, you can have this, but you can't. <laughs> you can look at it. Isn't that wonderful? And so you're imagining yourself playing with these bells and it's going nowhere. It's terrible. Like, it's cruel. It's, it's freaking cruel. <laughs> Okay, so that there's this, okay, so this reality of the, the big hands come and they get your wrists and they're like, no, you can play with the bells later. And so I'm going to look at this reality that says that the things that you love or the things that you want, the things that help you feel like your spark and your fire, um, you're going to have to wait. And so you're always going to be waiting and the time will never be right, okay? So that tells me that you being stuck basically... Something inside you is telling you the time will never be right for you to really be who you are. So no wonder you feel stuck. That's been pretty hard. This has been, and not just pretty hard, that's been really, you might as well be a statue for God's sakes. Okay, so. Yeah, this energy is everywhere. This energy is everywhere. Okay. Okay. It's kind of like gristly sand that's so fine. You don't realize you're inhaling and exhaling and it is influencing you all the time. <clears throat> Always getting you to just not yet, not yet, not yet. And you're, it's never going to be the right time ever. And that's reality. That's like the program of your reality is wait. Okay, so that needs to be nipped in the bud here. Okay, I'm still figuring out how to do this. It's not just like I can collect it all, turn it into a being, and send it away. Um, it's not. It's kind of like that strange purgatory space where I can't just pull you out of there because you're in a in a sense of mastery. It's like pulling the the cake out of the oven before it's done. It's just you don't do it. You know, it's having the baby born before it's actually grown. <laughs> you just don't do it. You know, so it's a good thing. And. So here, I got to figure this out. Okay, I'm going to create a door 
that is going to help me understand how to reconcile this. Because this energy is insisting on being... Um, like, like, let's say we had to vacuum all the air out of planet Earth. How do we accomplish that? And then it's kind of like, is that the best use of our time and skill? <laughs> this is, though, better. It's like maybe finding a way to oxygenate our world or something. Like, this thing is, we gotta... But it's, it's a big thing. It's not some small thing. It's a big thing, okay? Okay, the, the door is, um, it's got really heavy hinges on the left side, and it actually has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's got twelve kind of like cube, like it's raised. So they're cube shapes, but they're like, it has this like raised interiors. And so it's kind of looks like a maybe a bank door or something. It's a very, very heavy, thick door. Maybe they would have this in like, um, it was like Ocean's Eleven, like uh, it's like some kind of heist for the casinos or something. <laughs> I don't know, like bank heist. It's like a really pretty, special, thick door. So, oh, it's got like a latch. I can. It doesn't have a combination on it. It's like this latch, and it just clicks, and then it opens, but it opens very slowly, like uh, creepy. Okay, creepy. <laughs> It's slowly opening for me to go inside what's like a freezer box with a red carpet, but there's no temperature in here. And there's also a sense that if I go in there, the door's going to shut behind me. It'll be a trap. And so for me, sure, trap me, have fun. <laughs> it's like not that big of a deal, but the energetic um, program of it is all about fear. It's all about the impossibilities. It's all about, um, it's a trap. Like, so you'll never be able to face this. You'll never be able to reconcile this. It's always going to be there. So a lot of the energy that's built up here is confirmation that it's always going to be there. So we got to change that. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again. A part of me is just going to touch the door and say, wow, what an incredible heavy door you are. I've never seen a door quite like this. It really gets me thinking about some fun movies and, you know, some kind of like hide, you know, like heist or something. <clears throat> Las Vegas casinos. And another me goes in and is like touching the red carpet like, oh, wow, what a beautiful red carpet. I didn't even expect this. Um, did you, you know, roll this out for me? Am, am I the special one today? Wow. Another me is touching the air that's supposedly cold but has no temperature. Wow, what a, a nice freezer box this is. Like another me is touching like, oh, what an interesting kind of prison design. How, how amazing, how phenomenal. It's like, oh, I'm grateful to have this experience today. This is what an adventure. You know, thank you so much for this. So you see there's a lot of layers here about imprisonment, control, um, boxing you in, can you trust? Like it's kind of like reflecting from the beginning, um, but this is just the next level of breaking this down. Okay. Okay, I'm going to choose to see that someone's here that represents this because they, this energy wants to always be hidden and impossible to find. So I'm going to create, it, it's like a throne chair of the Almighty One, and then they're going to be kind of, I don't know, like apparently they're like a hard-boiled egg, but they glow a bit, and they're flexible, and they're flat, and they're very like egg-like texture, cold and... Uh, Clammy, perhaps, but flat and flexible is not breakable. It's just like a rounded object on a throne. <laughs> that is very weird. And I'm pulling all the fear-based stuff inside of it. And it starts to be full of pepper, like way too much pepper. Like you can never eat this egg. It's just way too much pepper. Might as well be pepper, no egg. <laughs> And I'm noticing all this black dust. The black dust is its kind of a chaos influence. It's, uh, 
it's got, it, there's a lot to it. So when I see this peppery, but it's like, wow, there's a lot of black dust, more black dust than anything. It's like, is it pepper? Is it black dust? Black dust is, it's very influential. It gets into everything. And, um, I, I've got to, I'm just going to have to pay attention and figure out what I'm going to do here. It's a being made out of the black dust and the black dust is every particle is alive and it's like shaking, um, like it's gonna blow up, but it doesn't express anger. It, it, it's completely composed. It seems like, um, it, it's kind of got like a father figure energy, like um, a boss, okay? It represents like, I'm the boss, I know what's best. So it's got that kind of energy, that demeanor to it. And the confusing thing is, is that the, there's love here. Like, I respect and love the boss. I will do what the boss tells me to do. I have to do what the boss tells me to do, otherwise I'm being disrespectful. And so it's all about the boss's life and not then yours. And this is, this is um, an inner child, again, con conflict, because the love is so pure and so respectful. But this is going to have to change. So the boss doesn't get to be the dictator, because that's not what love is. This is really impacting your ego, your higher mind, your third eye, like all that, this energy space, very influenced by this. Um, your heart, you want to be at the heart of who you are and live free in the heart of who you are, but you've got this, this energy dynamic going on that kind of holds you imprisoned, okay? Not free to be who you are and live for who you are. I see, I, I actually am supporting this black dust as and I'm becoming part of it and I smile at you, which I don't know is necessarily coming from the black dust or coming from me, but I'm, I'm animating this influence and I'm saying what would make me most proud of you is to see you discover who you are and get to live free. I give you the bells and I let you play them whenever you want. And this energy starts to crunch and scream on the inside and it starts to implode and it starts to express hate. It's, um, and I'm containing it in my own light. And I say, I love you too. And you can hate and you can fear and you can scream all you want, but you don't ever have any influence over this little one ever again. And it's all kind of imploding inside myself. And this is not about me, it's about you. And all the me's start to um, show you that you can do whatever you want with this place. You can keep it, you can turn it into a library, you can um, send it into the sun, whatever. What do you want to do with this energy space? It's just like kind of a skinny, long haul, the red carpet. The walls kind of look like the door. There's a golden chair where once sat the almighty black dust of influence. The boss you'll always have to respect. But things have changed now. The power has changed hands. It's your power now. What is your vision? You want to turn into a baseball game. But you don't want to be the only player on the team. Suddenly there's a whole, like, there's like a million people watching hot dogs, all kinds of like, uh, I don't know, chips and drinks and noise and music. And everybody's all on the same team. Like, uh, those who come to, to support this team are kind of part of the team. They're like cheerleaders that are, are free. And they're cheering on the team. And then we have competition, which makes it fun. So we have people who are cheering on this other team. And it's like the camaraderie and joy of um, 
competition. And you're surrounded by your best friends in the whole universe. And it's, it's, your team is full of all the best people. Like you all have a unique personality, but you somehow all get along and you bring something unique to the table and you play each different a role on the team of baseball, okay? And you're winding up for an incredible like pitch. <laughs> And I hear the crack on the bat, so I guess the other team hits the ball and it's a pop fly. And then it just goes out in the backfield and it's like caught and then everybody cheers. <laughs> and you're like, yes, and you're blushing and it's like, I don't know, it just feels good. You're kind of like the center of attention and even though you, you threw the pitch and it was hit, it's, it's like it, there's something about being the pitcher is like center of attention. But everybody in the team is cheering. Everybody, um, it, you have to work together to win, right? And uh, it's just bringing your heart to life. There's something about the electricity and the teamwork and the love of family and the, the connection. And also the challenge, the camaraderie of a competition. And you're in like red and white and the competition is in black and white. And um, it's like the black is the evil and the red is the good or whatever. And it's kind of like turning into a little Hollywood movie. And it's like, will this uh, little league championship make it to the end? <laughs> and then we have all these weird personal conflicts and somehow you make it and you all win. It's like a very good story. And I see it's all kind of melting like ice cream and you smile, you throw your hat in the air and you cheer. You have a very creative um, personality and I start to see the ground is growing like we're back in the old space and it's like not hard and lava anymore it's actually growing into just grass and trees and and that that world where you could play play baseball and have fun and feel alive with so many others it, it brings you to life and spirit and you can ring the bells and play the piano and, and make whatever noise you want to make. You can run the bases. You can face the competition. There's a lot of uh, ability to um, have passion. And passion that wins, okay? That's a cool detail. Because that's part of the focus here is feeling like celebrating another win. And it's about competition and facing the competition with camaraderie and still like smoking the competition. And it's like really fun to win. And it's not like you're a sore loser either. It's like, okay, I'll give you this one. You won this time, but you're on, you know, it's like really fun, um, playful. It's, it's a genuine um, life experiences are so enriching when they're like this, you know? And that enrichment is like nurturing your sacral chakra. When that sacral chakra is nurtured, it, it doesn't matter who you are. It's, it's like beautiful things happen in your life because you are beautiful. And you feel beautiful from the inside out. And it's like it, beautiful things are growing. So that sacral chakra energy is pretty powerful place to influence like manifesting and uh, shifting of the, the energy around you and bringing in beautiful things because the, the energy is beautiful within yourself and you're letting it happen, okay? And uh, I see that everything is turning into a beautiful garden beautiful trees, beautiful landscape. And you, there is no kind of like shielding or compartment container. There is no um, ego in the way here because every, every aspect of you is starting to see the value of being open, opening up and enjoying life like a child and that there aren't any restrictions here. And the energy of restriction is... It, it's not it's not a part of what's what's guiding you or controlling you and that's a huge big deal i really like the way your energy field feels i feel a lot of impact again sacral chakra third eye crown chakra are the ones that are buzzing the most right now but it's also like you being you is a grounded thing so root chakra here like you are grounded in who you are and that feels really freaking good. 
It feels emotionally good. It feels like you're at the center of who you are and the heart of who you are, right? You are free to express yourself. And that's a body language thing. That's, um, this is how I roll. This is my life. That's like a language thing, whether you talk about it or you just live it. Like your actions are speaking louder than your words, okay? So it is a throat chakra thing. It's a communication thing. And so you're really getting a full-on energy activation to be activated in yourself and in your spirit and what brings you to life. I, I feel inspired to go check that space, the colorless space where you're in a place of mastery or like a cake in the oven waiting to be, you know, done baking. So... <laughs> It's all connected. There's a reason I saw that place. So I see you are alive as yourself again. Very inner childlike um, energy, playful energy, adventurous, fun energy. And when you are true to yourself, then you aren't associated with any other place. Because when you go through hard times, sometimes we are parts of our soul will be attracted to dark abyss or a colorless dead zone, or, you know, like parts of our soul go hibernate in places that make us, you know, remind us of how we feel. And we just amplify the divine truth that this is my reality when you don't have to feel that way. Well, it's hard to choose to feel happy when life is like terrorizing me. Well, then life is threatened by you. <laughs> So, so life can do life's thing, but you can still be you no matter what happens. And you don't have to break yourself down just because life is. You can make yourself stronger and then really rejoice in whatever comes, you know? I see that that world is actually almost like part of your own energetic environment because it's starting to pull all the way back into the little spark. And the little spark is getting up and standing now, blinking its eyes in a strange like creative spirit realm space. You, you look odd. Um, you look like, uh, okay, you have a glowing white head. And then you have a, a huge, kind of like a big shoulder, like your outfit is black and it's kind of like a dress-like, but it's like a man dress. <laughs> it's got a belt here, but it seems like a, a, maybe a, a sorcerer might have this uh, like kind of outfit on. And it's got like these tall shoulder patty things here. And you look so strange and you even have a thin, a very thin staff and it's got something beautiful at the top of it. And I can tell you're blinking and your head's like an orb that glows, okay? It makes you think of a full moon because it doesn't glow like super bright, but it does glow. And uh, this is, again, is of another creative essence. It's like you're a creative, you express creativity in all of its forms very easily. And this, this head, it actually has eyes in every direction. I'm starting to notice that. And it doesn't have to be anything but its, its infinite eye. It doesn't have to be anything but its infinite eye. It's shedding all the layers of structure. It just woke up from the colorless void, okay? It just woke up and it's now, this is the first of its expressions. And suddenly it's self-realizing. It doesn't have to be told what it is. It's self-realizing what it is. And is dropping all the concept of a, a defined structure. And so it just is, it is just an all seeing eye, okay? That means you are an all seeing eye. And it's not about being stuck here or free there and defined. It's just about being an all seeing eye that is everywhere and everything simultaneously. And I see this energy actually like plucked like an apple from a tree, but it's like it's plucking itself. Like it just it's like aligning with you with your inner eye, but it's also aligning with your crown too. It's like higher mind and human um, perception, but it's higher perception even in here because it it is you, and you want to be a part of you, and you want to be a part of this life. And you are seeing so much more than you might be have been giving yourself credit for, but you're seeing so much more now because you can, because you're free to, because you, you're a limitless being working through the human experience. 
and you feel so true to your own essence. It's really beautiful to feel head to toe, above, below, within, around, in all sacred directions. You are you. It's really nice. <laughs> all right, so thank you so much for this experience. I really enjoyed diving into your goals today. Really enjoyed that whole process. I, I'm sure people watching are appreciating this too. It was a really beautiful session. If you're interested in booking a session with me, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a beautiful day.